Hi everyone, this is Luke from Coco's. In the previous video, we have successfully utilized custom effects and material uh, to replace the material built in this bright component. Today's content is relatively simple. We're mainly doing an application, and in this video, we'll try to do some transformations to custom effects to implement map solubility effects in order to achieve a really cool effect. We need to mark which pixels show up and which ones disappear. A better way to use this is to use a noise map to make each pixel change. So this noise map is shown in this figure. This is a noise map I found online. Of course, you can also generate a noise map by such software like Adobe After Effects or Premiere. A noise map only has three colors. It's a non-uniform distribution of black, white, and gray. So you can use the principle of black through white opaque gray semi-transparents to achieve this irregular disillusion effect. The simplest way to create a dissolve effect usually requires two parameters. One is the noise figure and the other is the threshold value. Let's try to define these two parameters. As we know from the previous video, the CC effect wrapper is a list of rendering process descriptions edited by the YAML format. The main content is related to the interaction with the editor and the data interaction with CC program. Let's review the structure of CC effect. As we know from the previous video, technique rendering technology representatives complete the final effect. A solution can have one or more passes blended together. A pass is a single GPU drawing. Typically includes a vertex shader and a fragment shader. This is the most basic shader declaration. If you want to add a perimeter or mapping, you, you can't do it. So you need to know more about the parameters of the pass. Some of the most common parameters are shown in this figure. The property stores the customizable parameters of the pass that needs to be displayed on the property inspector. I will focus on this today. Blend state image blending test configurations will be expanded upon in the final video. Mainly used to set mixed modes of the image, the depth stencil state depth template test configuration is mainly used to set depth and template. Rasterizer state rasterizes the state data processing, and currently the only configurable option is face rejection. This will be also covered in the final video. The last one is switch, which specifies which define the execution of the pass depends on. It can be any valid macro name, but should not overlap with any definition defined in the shaders used. For more in-depth configuration, please check the Coco's official website for pass option configuration parameters. Next, let's focus on the properties parameter. The properties consist of a parameter name and a parameter configuration. The configuration of all the parameters are, is shown in the figure below. This first parameter is target and its default value is under, undefined. This can point to any valid uniform channel, and it can specify a continuous single or multiple, but not random rearrangement. It is commonly used as shown in the figure above. If it is effect 4 uniform, it allows four float properties to populate. You can also make two VEC2 properties fill it. The second value represents the default value of the attribute. If it is a texture, you can directly set the default color value name. For example, white, red, black, blue, or others. It is a value of an array. Just fill in the value directly. For example, on this picture. I will list all the default value types and options later, but the last ones with the editor are compiled related. Let's start with the first display name. This represents the name of the property to be displayed in the editor. The default is the property name. If the parameter is configured, it becomes a name of this parameter. The second one is a type which represents the type of property. Only vector and color need to specify the type separately. All others do not. The vector is vector and the color is color. And the third parameter is visible. The property must be defined on the properties in order to display in the editor. This is the prerequisite for properties to be displayed. Later on, we need to look at the visible parameter and the macro definition. The default value of the visible parameter is true. Fill in false and it will be displayed in the editor. Uniform declared in the macro definitions must be enabled for the macro to be displayed. Otherwise, the property will not be displayed either. And the fourth is a tooltip, which defaults to the null character. It represents the properties that the parameter displayed on the editor prompt. Once sent here, you can move the mouse over the property name in the material panel. View the attribute prompt, and it can be any string. And the fifth is the range, which represents the range of the values in the form of an array. The first one is the minimum range. The second one is the maximum range. The third option is the size, step size of the range adjustment. These three can also be split out and configured separately. Min, max, and step are used to set them respectfully. 
Further down is slide, which represents whether the parameter value should be turned into a slide. Use with range, and the values can be true or false. The next one is the parent, which means the macro can be used if it is enabled, it is written as shown here. The macro set here must be used in CC program. Otherwise, it is invalid. The next two sampler starters are for textures. MinFilter and MagFilter handle texture filtering. An address UVW is the texture wrap STR. The filter options for textures include none, linear, nearest, and anastropic. Usually it is combined with the light source to make some response. Since we won't be talking about related items to light sources, if you're interested, please study in another tutorial. The texture wrap options include wrap, mirror, clamp, and border. This has been discussed in detail before, so I won't explain it here too much. Here is a list of the knowledge previously learned and more common properties of the configuration. More detailed configuration is also in our documentation. Finally, let's look at the supported default types and their practical application. Next, let's have a little test I made of the property configuration here. The prop first property A, I have configured its parent to be the use second texture macro here. I also used a macro below, and this macro also affects the attribute I. Next, let's look at property B. B is configured with the visible as false, which means it will be rendered in the editor panel. Next, let's look at property C. C is configured with the name to be displayed. Then C will not be displayed in the editor panel, but rather test C. Next, let's look at attribute D, which is not configured for the editor, instead configured for the target, which means that its data will be stored on the X component of the uniform test D. Next, let's look at property E. It is configured with a type of color, which means it will be edited with the color editor. Next is attribute F, which configures the attribute hint. Then, moving the mouse over the property in the computer panel will prompt it. Next, let's look at property G, which sets the display range in the adjustment step of the value. Property H is similar, except it uses a slider. Finally, all the properties will point to a uniform. Next, let's look at how it appears in the editor panel. You can see that A and I are in the macro. When we enable the macro, we can see that properties A and I, then C is renamed to test C. B is not visible because visibility is false. E can be edited with the color editor. F, you can see its property hint. And G, you can adjust its parameters. When we get, nine, get to 9.5, we can't go any further because the maximum value is 10. Then this is the slider bar. The slider also has a maximum value of 10. It can't be adjusted upwards anymore. This is the application of the property configuration. Next, I'll delete all the test content and revert to the sprite if dot effect of the previous video. On top of that, next I'll start to implement the dissolve effect. The simplest way to create the dissolve effect requires two parameters. One is the noise map, and the other is the threshold value that controls the filtering of black and white pixels. Let's start defining these two parameters. First, define the noise map property, whose default value is white. Next, let's give it a property hint on the editor. Then, define a dissolve threshold property, which the default value is 0.5. The threshold range is limited to 0 to 1. It has a step size of 0.01 and is played as a slider. Next, let's declare a uniform of the same name below. Also, when we use texture macros enabled, it achieves the texture dissolve effect. Otherwise, it's meaningless. Next, define the dissolve threshold. In Coco's effect, all non-sample uniforms should be declared as a block. This declaration is similar way of structuring are written in C or C++. Finally, remember to end the block declaration with a semicolon. Otherwise, it will indicate a writing error. Then we go back to the editor to see if there was any problems with the way it was written. So we found an error here. We can look at the reasons for the error. It's probably in the property declaration. The way YAML is written, you have to have a semicolon and a space between keys and values. So let's go back and look at it. At this point, we can see that there are two properties are added in the material panel, then handle the dissolution logic. It must be processed before the main texture. Select the texture RGB in any of the channels. 
If the color value is less than the dissolved threshold, the fragment is discarded. Make this part of the transparent. Then we set an edge transition color close to the dissolved threshold. I'll set a transition color here that's close to orange. Then we can look at the results. Since the main texture is only black and white, let's change the texture to something other than just black and white. Next, associate the sprite material to the custom material property. Because we have enabled the use texture macro beforehand, even if we associate it, it will remain enabled. Then we apply the noise map to adjust the value. As you can see, as the values increase, the black pixels provided by the noise map gradually dissolve and then transition to white pixels dissolving. At this point, we have a simple dissolve effect. Of course, you can also dynamically modify the dissolve texture and dissolve threshold at runtime. The draw script is still used to mount it on the sprite node. Here we need to get the sprite component, then get the custom material material, and then assign a value to the property. Here we take two properties. The first is the name of the property, and the second is the value of the property. Let's run it and see the results. Ah, success. Here we've completed the transformation of a shader. Doesn't it look easy? Well, you need to keep trying and play with more shaders in order to gradually master them. So you must try more shader transformations while learning. There are also many examples on the internet that you could try out. One classic one is the Shader Toy website. There's a lot of shader effects in implemented code. Study where here where you can. But that's it for today. Thank you so much, and we'll see you in the next video.